here with Music Marketing TV, and this is the first video on SoundForge. We're gonna be looking at the windows of SoundForge, what SoundForge even is. It's gonna be very brief. Um, bringing audio into SoundForge, processing that audio, and then exporting it. So first, SoundForge, you just should know out of the get-go, it is a bit different if you've worked with a DAW before. SoundForge is about treating each audio file as almost its own project. So here I have two audio files. This one's called Sound 2, and this one is a guitar track. And they are completely separate. I process them separately. If I play one, I can only play one. Whatever one is focused at the moment, it will play. So it can handle things like stereo. It can handle things like surround sound. But these sounds themselves are their own sort of projects. This gives SoundForge a couple of advantages. Uh, first, the workflow is really different. There are some very specialized tools that you would not typically find in an audio editor, especially a normal DAW. Um, when it comes to things like batch processing or exporting, things of that nature, SoundForge could be a great choice. Dialogue editing, it has several specialized tools for that. And that's uh, sort of my third point is there are some workflows that are available here that are not usually uh, something you can do in other DAWs. So those are some reasons why you might consider SoundForge. So let's talk about the windows real quick. First, when you bring in a sound, it will create a new sort of window for you to view that sound. And each window will have its own transport control because it's like its own project. So if I have this one in focus, you can tell it's in focus because it's a bit darker, right? This one's a bit lighter. Now this one's in focus. So if I have this in focus and hit play, it'll play. Now, right now it's only playing out of one ear, you see how this one's a lighter gray? Well, if I click in the center, I can get that playhead to go across both. And this is very common across many types of audio editors, not just SoundForge. The ability to easily look at the left channel or the right channel separately or them both. So if I go ahead and hit play, we can hear them both now. Down here, this is a mono file. And so if I hit play while this one's selected, it plays. So if you have more than one sound open, uh, it's very handy to know sort of where your focus is at. And there are some tools that make this a little bit easier, but at the beginning, we're gonna do things sort of the longer way. And then I'll show you shortcuts as they become more convenient as we move along here. Uh, you'll notice I have an unbelievable amount of toolbars. I turned every toolbar on. Um, this actually shares many controls with what's over here. By default, the first time you open it, this should be here. If you're not seeing a window, go up to the view tab and there are some options here. So I have the channel meters on. This is just gonna display whatever we're currently playing. And I also have the instant action, which is this guy right here. That's what this is. You'll see some toolbars, but if you want more toolbars, um, I recommend you stick with the default ones at first, but if you want more, you'll come up to options and then go to preferences. Inside of preferences, there is a specific tab for the toolbars and you can check which ones you want. These are, I turn them all on. Um, I recommend just leaving the normal ones on and then we'll cover toolbars as they become more useful. A lot of these functions that are here can easily be found in the instant action area. This is a newer way of doing things. It also has the names that are easily viewable. This one doesn't have the names. Um, I have this on just because sometimes I like to reach up here for this stuff. This is the only reason why. Uh, you can customize these. The toolbars can have whatever you want in them. They can be docked, they can be undocked. They accelerate many types of workflows. So let's talk about bringing in a sound. So I have here two sounds. One of them is a stereo wave and one of them is a mono wave. Uh, let's go ahead and just close these and we're not gonna save changes. So if you bring in a sound, it'll automatically just open it as a new window. So for example, I'll bring this in and this is just from a file browser from a recording session I did a while back. So it's just this little guitar track. We can place our playhead and hit spacebar. As long as our focus is on this, it'll play. So that's great. Now, the other one I, I want to show, I don't have actual stereo files of the other one, right? They, be, they come in these left-right pairs because I recorded them as two panned mono files. So the way I'm going to get these in 
is I'm going to go to File, New, and you can hit Control N. I'm gonna choose the format and I'm gonna match the session specs that I was recording to. So I was recording at 48K, 24 bit. So I'm gonna hit OK. I'll get this new stereo option. And right now it's blank, so nothing will happen. And I'm going to grab, and I'll move this to the same screen so we can see it. We'll take this 19 take. Hopefully it's a good one. Uh, we'll hit OK. This is the mix window. We'll see this window many times in future videos. I'll bring on the right channel. And that's how I currently import uh, stereo audio. So there's there probably a better way to do it. But if I've recorded it as dual mono and I want to treat it as one stereo session, that's how I do it. And if I go ahead and hit play, You get it. So that's a little bit on how you can get your sounds in. That's how I like to do it. I think drag and drop is the simplest. Let's go ahead and look at some processing. It could be a little overwhelming, but basically we can select a region and by just click dragging and say we want to process this one region. Let's say that we want to reverse it or maybe add a reverb or do any number of things. Over in the instant action area, there is some editing options for fades, splitting it up. Um, there's also this area for effects, and these are sort of our core effects. We'll get into VSTs in a bit, but let's say, for example, I want to add a flanger to this, and we can hit preview. It is pretty handy to have loop on. So if you look up here, there's this little curly loop with an arrow. This is the loop playback option. You can also enable it by hitting Q on your keyboard. We go ahead and hit Q. Now with this open, it's not gonna work. Go ahead and close this for a second. So if I go ahead and hit Q, you can see that toggles on and off and that loops the playback for us. Very handy to know about. So we're gonna go over to that flanger again. And this is just an audio effect and we'll hit preview. And you can hear it, we can mess with it. Make sure real time is checked for this. And let's say that we like this effect. You can hit OK. And now only this selected region will have it. And let's go ahead and let's make that effect a little more pronounced. So I'm going to double click this yellow area. Whenever you make a selection, you'll notice it will make a region for you. Uh, let's go ahead and make the flanger like really aggressive just so it's really clear. So if we preview this, <laughs> yeah. Just, I know it's over the top, but what the heck. I'm gonna hit Control A to make the region the entire thing. Otherwise, when it hits the region, it'll start looping, which we generally don't want. So, and there's ways of controlling this with these controls up here, but we'll avoid all the extra details for now. So let's go ahead and hear it. Yeah, so pretty crazy, but you can add some effects this way. There's a reverb. And what's nice about the reverb is it'll actually carry through, even if you only apply it to one section. So a lot of cool things you could do here. If we go up, let's say that we would like to reverse this section. Well, there's a lot more than just the effects. So if we come up here, there is the process tab where there's a lot of things related to directly affecting the samples that is not I guess traditionally considered an effect. And then we have the ability to add in plugins and there are some tools for things like restoration and some things that would be considered more like effects, like some distortion, these are like built in. So let's go in, we'll go to reverse. There is a whole load of things. I recommend just bringing in an audio sample and just messing with it a ton. So we'll go ahead, we'll reverse that. Reverse is just the one section. So if we play it back from here, and I, this time I'll let it loop so you can sort of see the issue if you let it play. So it's looping now. Um, let's go ahead and hit Control A and that just clears that selection. It selects the whole thing. So let's say that, you know, you finished, you're all done, you're happy with this. Let's go ahead and export it. So there are two ways to export. If you're working with just a single thing in your project, it can often make the most sense to just go to save as. Um, it is here in the export option, or you can come up to file, save as. And in here, you can save it just as a WAV file or any other number of formats that you might possibly want. 
So that's option one. It will save whatever your current selected thing is. So see how it says sound three? That's a giveaway. So if you're going to rename it, just remember what you had selected because that's what it's going to export. Now let's say that you want to export everything at once. Maybe you've got an album in here and you've applied a similar process to all the tracks. Who knows? There's a bunch of reasons why you might want to do this as a batch thing. So for this, you'll actually go to file and then export. Uh, you might reach for this first actually because it's kind of what you would think of. But save as sometimes can be simpler. So we'll go to export. And in here, we could choose the file. So you could see it looks on my hard drive where these are at and we'll export these files. And you can apply a whole host of things to them uh, to get exactly what you want. You can even get out different formats. So if you want an MP3 in a wave and an AIFF or whatever, um, you can do multiple at the same time. So this could be a pretty powerful thing, but you go ahead, set it up, and you hit export and you'll have your, your files. So that's the introduction to SoundForge. You should now be able to bring sound in, add some basic effects and processing and bounce it. And if you're missing a menu or something, you should know how to locate it. I do want a really quick mention. There is a super useful help uh, thing here. If you hit F1, it'll bring it up. And this is very, very handy. You can use search to find things that you're looking for. Uh, but I find that this in general will be sufficient for probably 80% of what you want to do. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.